Hi, I'm Kate Sheehan Roach with Contemplative Journal. We're here today with Father Thomas Keating at St. Benedict's Monastery in Snowmass, Colorado, talking about contemplation and compassion. Thank you so much, Father Thomas, for meeting with us today. It's a great honor to speak with you. Father Thomas, there are many ways to define the term compassion, but what specifically is the Christian understanding of compassion? In 1 Corinthians 13, there is a famous passage of some length about what love is. And, and uh, uh, love is kind, love is uh, not puffed up, love is not jealous. Uh, love uh, doesn't seek its own, and, uh, and it lasts longer than anything else does. In fact, it probably is another word for being as understood of God. Being as always becoming more of what it is, even though it's already there because of the eternal, timeless character of the divine. Uh, relationship. So, so, so love is really another word for relationship, or it's what the essence of relationship really is. It's, a, it's the spontaneous a, attraction, but it also is a, is a choice, a commitment, a, and it's that surrender to love in the sense of self-giving or self-surrendering to the divine love that opens human beings to the awareness of the divine love that is already in us all in virtue of our being. That's why being is more important than doing, since it's out of being that any great doing or whatever emerges. We manifest who we are by how we think and live and talk, but especially in how we be, that is to say, accepting our share of the human condition that involves some suffering and accepting everybody else and feeling accountable or responsible for everyone else as well as ourselves to respond to this love which is overarching and which is tending to make everybody equal uh, in the maximum kind of, of way that God is, 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 is totally present to everything that exists always and in a dynamic way, in a relational way of bringing them little by little out of our animal nature as spiritual evolution uh, believes and now science keeps confirming into the, uh, the fullness of human possibility, which is ultimately to become God too, insofar as that's possible to a limited human nature. But it means through compassion to feel as God feels, to react as God feels, to love, to forgive, to collaborate, uh, to uh, work with, and to have less and less sense of being a private identity and, and, and more a part of the whole divine plan that is moving, according to scripture, towards a new creation in which the divine will be manifested not just in individual humans, but in the, in the whole species in some way that we, I can't imagine yet, but which is very uh, significantly being teased into the universal consciousness of mankind for perhaps the first time in history through the effect of globalization that, that can't be resisted and that uh, technology and travel and interpenetration of cultures is is bringing about, uh, whether we like it or not. But from the Christian perspective, it's a stepping stone to the manifestation of the goodness, the beauty, truth of God. But there's so much more 
uh, there's all the other relationships that we need to taste and to feel God as, the, as present totally to us as we evolve to higher states of, of awareness or, or penetration of divine compassion. So compassion itself can grow into ever deeper, deeper expression. It has no end because it's really the love of God in us. The, the love of God is, is, is to be discovered within us. It's, it's not so much a question of seeking it as of consenting to it. So, so we need the deep faith of uh, trusting in the ultimate reality. Jesus' last discourse is, and his priestly prayer emphasizes the desire of God that we share in, his, in God's own oneness, which is infinite. You can't improve on that. So the possibility of loving God with his own love, which is we, in the Christian scheme we also call the Holy Spirit, and it, it invites us into a development of consciousness and of human life that transcends the human potential and, and it becomes divine. In other words, Christianity is calling us not just to be a better human being, which is certainly desirable and would be appreciated by our friends and relatives, but it's, but it's, this, it, 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 it's the commitment to allowing God to transform us into the divine compassion and all the consequences of that unified and unifying a concept, but which goes beyond concept into experience. So it, it's the experience of God's love that uh, establishes the contemplative life in us and awakens the contemplative dimension of every human being. So it seems then that that God has given us this incredible compassion to become not only fully human, but divinely human, as, as exemplified in, in the actual incarnation of Jesus and his life and death. But the Spirit has been in the world from the beginning of time, and this presence or this relationship has always been accessible if people can get uh, the, uh, a significant trust in, in, in the presence of God within them and with all, in all the people and gradually to see it present in all creation. In other words, the sense, our sense life is God hiding behind appearances of one kind or another. And so we find in the early fathers of the church and, and, and many times since then, the experienced mystics uh, describing the spiritual senses, which are, are analogies of the physical senses from a spiritual perspective or an intuitive perfect, uh, perspective, so that the presence of God in sense experience begins to emerge. For instance, in, in Zen Satori, at least certain forms, the, the experience of, uh, of reality is, is, is sometimes that one senses a oneness with some natural phenomenon. Like, like you, how do you experience God when you see a tree? Well, this is not an intellectual question and can't be answered on the, on the level of rational consciousness because it, it's coming through the intuitive levels which draw on sense experience but translate them into a deeper reality of the mystery of God manifesting himself in everything that exists from a subatomic particle on. So how are your bosons doing today? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great discovery if they can prove it, because it means there's, there's some 
scientific reason for invisible or spiritual energy to get translated into specific material objects. In other words, the wave localizes, I suppose each of us is a kind of localized expression of the, of the divine creative being. So since this is equally shared by everybody, the equality of everyone is, is just second nature to those people who've started to experience God. And hence it's not a source of pride, I'm doing this, but a realization that we're uh, at a certain real level of reality, we're the, as much united with, with a, a rock or a little sand or a distant star, or, so that we're, we're beginning to be drawn into an action that is so simple, so unified, so boundless, so infinite, that everything experiences the fullness of God, whether it's galactic or infinitesimal. And so you begin to relate to God with a certain dynamism and are not surprised by changes of consciousness that we now know are part of God's training to bring us out of the traces of the false self and the egoistic uh, exaggerations and to let God be God in us so we can radiate this goodness. So true Christian service is God in me serving God in you. We have to think big of God. We mustn't think of him as, 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 as morally tied up with the rigid ideas or fussiness or judgmental. I mean, God, the Father, says he's given all judgment to the Son, and the Son says he doesn't judge anybody. <laughs> so why judge yourself? It's a waste of time. It, but to open oneself to the invitation and the attraction to be who you really are, which is a child of God that is invited to all, through all the stages of, of spiritual development that are possible and perhaps others we don't know yet. Yes, and Julian of Norwich and many of the mystics said that we cannot know God until we know ourselves and we can't know ourselves until we know God in that same cycle of knowing. It's finding out who you are. That is to say, a, a manifestation of God and, and, and that God relates to us wherever we are. It's so humble that uh, it's perfectly, uh, totally present to, to a child on the day of birth <laughs> as to a gentleman at my great age uh, on, on the cusp of the next world. So it's all the same to God, because it's nothing but gift, nothing but becoming. Uh, being, uh, even the supreme being, doesn't, uh, doesn't contain God. So God is beyond being or non-being or any category. He just is. And so, as he said to Moses, uh, I am who I am. I mean, that's about the best description you'll ever get. How important is compassion to humankind? Compassion is just a word. It's a symbol of some experience or reflection on it that, that people use and, and which has been found especially uh, useful or effective in, in, in developing resonance in other people who have some contemplative experience that is a common experience in some degree while always being unique because every human being is unique and has its own spiritual path but needs the help of a community and hopefully of religion and spiritual practices to uh, fully accept its, 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 its reality as a divine manifestation. Okay. So the mystical body then is, is motivated by compassion when it's fully itself. But because it's in this world, it has a number of diseases or 
not so hot organisms or negative bacteria uh, or barnacles, so to speak, clinging to us that are hard to get off. <laughs> and, and you can't just wish them off. And it, it takes time to withdraw from over what we call attachments or, or identifications with particular behaviors or experiences that we think will bring us happiness. In other words, we're made for happiness, so if we don't know what it is, you go seeking for it elsewhere. And that's the basis for the uh, false self as uh, uh, pushed by the separate self-self sense, which has to defend itself now once it realizes it's separate. So how does this happen, this letting go of self? To love God with your whole mind, heart, soul, and strength. And your neighbor is yourself. That's all you have to do. Compassion has, has levels or stages of completeness or integration or intensity. And it, I don't think it's the last stop on the line towards unity. I think unity is even beyond compassion as we understand that term. It, it, it's isness that is always becoming, so it never ceases to grow, and it never ceases to be creative. And so it's, it's not a question of arriving at an end, like we, many folks think of dying, going to heaven, well, we can relax. It's, it's in finding relaxation in the most immense amount of activity that true unity exists. There's no opposition at, the, at a certain level of development between action and contemplation. They're the same thing. So that one can be resting in God all the time, even when muddled and confused and looking at a computer and thinking about all kinds of things, it doesn't destroy or take away the awareness of the deeper source in which one is always rooted. It's like doing everything in the house of God, as the psalm suggests. You know, I want to spend my life in the house. Well, all creation is the house of God. So the incarnation is an act of pure love. Far beyond love in the sense that we understand it. It's a love that is incomprehensible to us at this point, unless you participate in some degree in, in, in giving up God himself, so to speak, or at least your idea of God. But you can participate in it through compassion, feeling with, being equal to in, in experiencing in a human way, at least with you the dispositions in which the Godhead is, is eternally operating and expressed in the Trinity as total gift. So in this perspective, sacrifice is the meaning of the universe. 